Yeah, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay, I've just kept a timer so that I don't overrun. So firstly, you know, thank you for giving me this opportunity. And uh, I told him, look, I don't know if you have a personal grudge against me. This is the hardest time, right? It's just post lunch and then I'm supposed to talk AI, right? So <laughs> please try not to doze off. And uh, again, I'm not here to talk about, you know, how AI operates. It's more about what AI does for you right, uh, as a small and medium business or as a corporate, because an algorithm or model means nothing unless it either helps you save money or it helps you increase revenue or it kind of delights the customer or like Hari said, you know, uh, helping you reduce risk. So yeah, my name is, uh, you know, Prem Narayan Das. Uh, I'm a chemical engineer. I've spent 20 years with uh, in IT industry. Uh, lived in many parts of the world, including exotic places like Denmark, Sweden. And all my life, uh, what I've been doing is helping organizations uh, use a uh, IT, right, not AI, uh, uh, to transform uh, you know, their businesses, right, how they can use uh, IT to improve their business, uh, either be it you know, improving your operational efficiency, increasing the customers, and things like that. And uh, in the last few years, uh, you know, I've been fortunate enough to work with a lot of uh, AI and blockchain. So I was heading blockchain for uh, DXC Technology, which is the third largest IT company in the world. I uh, have, imp have implemented some of the world's first blockchain projects, but then I feel the enterprise blockchain is still way ahead of time, and uh, it was time to kind of look at how to help organizations use AI. So AI, uh, look, AI, everyone is using uh, and winning with AI, right? So every industry, be it manufacturing, be it retail, be it energy, they've started using AI. They're benefiting from it, right? And uh, as a small and medium businesses, of course, they can also benefit from AI, right? There's no doubt uh, they, they, can't, uh, they, can't, they can't, right? They can benefit. But the biggest problem with small and medium businesses is that they are small and they are medium, <laughs> and yeah, and they they lack a lot of resources. So you end up, uh, you know. So if if you've been in the business of small and medium, uh, and now that I'm running a company which is small and medium, right? I kind of I kind of understand because you'll go with a lot of SaaS products, right? You go you'll go with. Uh, uh, you know, uh, QuickBooks for your accounting, you'll go with uh, Google Analytics for your analytics, you'll go with HubSpot. So all these are SaaS platforms, which are nice because they come at a very small cost, you pay per month. And uh, but, but as a byproduct, what happens is uh, your data is siloed, right? Your sales data is sitting in one place, your marketing data is in, sitting in another place, and you have, uh, you know, your data all over the place, and you have no control over it. So if I told you that you can use AI, yes, you can use AI and start benefiting, but it is a step-by-step -step process. You can't just wake up one day and say, ah, this is a pill of AI, I'm going to just take it and start using AI in my company. It's not going to happen that way. The first thing you need to do is you need to ensure that you're data-driven, right? A lot of these small and medium businesses, because of the complexity of uh, data, the siloness of the data, they end up doing a lot of guesswork, right? They don't understand, uh, you know, how their marketing campaign, which they're spending on Facebook or Google, is helping them increase their sales because their sales systems are completely isolated and disjoint from marketing. So the first thing in order to become an AI-driven small and medium business is you need to start looking at uh, being a data-driven company. So when I say data-driven company, it's about uh, you know, using data for every aspects of your decision making, right? You need to uh, ensure that whatever decisions that you're taking is driven by data, and every employee in your organization has a access to the data, right? You can't just limit it. And many times, because of cost and complexities, a lot of these employees don't uh, have access to that data. So, in the journey of AI, right, uh, the first thing you need to do is you need to try and bring all your data into one place. So, the biggest challenge for SMB today is uh, the ability, uh, you know, the data is spread across everywhere, and data is a new oil, and unless you bring all this data into one place, it's not going to happen. So the first thing uh, in your AI journey you need to do is you need to bring all your data from various systems and come bring it together and ensure that every employee in your organization has access to that data, right? And he's able to use the data to make decisions. He's able to play around with the data, you know, take actionable, uh, you know, look at the matrices, you know, get actionable insights and take decisions based on that. So that's the first challenge which SMBs have to solve. The second challenge which SMBs will have to solve today is uh, most of the SMBs, uh, at least the ones who have actually implemented BI, which is business intelligence, um, you know, they're struggling because the dashboards will tell you, you know, what happened, right? And that's about it. And I, I can bet that there'll be so much of dashboards in every organization, very few people actually really use it. So 
uh, you have to actually you know go beyond descriptive analytics because your dashboard will tell you what happened it won't tell you why it's happening what is going to happen what is that you need to do to kind of avoid that making happen and ai is what helps you move from descriptive to predictive to prescriptive right and that's a journey it happens over a period of 6 months 1 year 3 year 10 year depending on the complexity uh, and depending on your current maturity right so that's what you should be aiming to do and also the the third challenge is as a small and medium business is you're very cost conscious uh, you know it you know folks are very hard to get especially data scientists data analysts pi is very hard so you need to uh, you know um, uh, this is going to be a big challenge for you right so uh, so as a smb um, you know, uh, you have to compete with these large fishes. Uh, you have to, you know, excite your customers, bring uh, uh, bring your operational efficiencies down. So what you ex actually need is uh, three. Uh, you know, you need you need to build these three capabilities, right? So one is you need to bring all your data into one place. Then you need to, uh, you know, take the data, clean the data, join the data, so that you can get 360 degree view of that uh, 360 degree view of uh, what's happening, and start infusing AI, right? So if you are doing, if you build a uh, 360 degree dashboard which says what's your sales looking like, right, which is descriptive, you can start building AI models which will start powering your descriptive analytics with what will happen in the next week, right? And there are tools already available from companies like Facebook, right? Uh, uh, they have a uh, they have an algorithm called Facebook Profit. Uh, there are many other companies who provide you open source tools to do that. And the last thing you need to do is, uh, you know, AI is about building a model, but model means nothing until it is kind of integrated into your processes. So what you need to do is, now you have a 360 degree view. You will power the 360 degree view with, uh, you know, the the inference or the predictive or whatever inference you do and you start getting ai powered dashboards and apps which will help you take your decisions better right so that's what you need to do and unfortunately as a small and medium businesses uh, you know it's very difficult this is uh, a snapshot of all the tools which are available to do what i told you right bring the data analyze and uh, it's crazy right and as smb you're wondering uh, where do i start right and a lot of your good friends will tell you or uh, you know the university friends will tell you there's an open source tool out there you don't need to spend millions of dollars to do that yes uh, there is an open source tool but then figuring out which is the best one and then bringing them all together and stitching them together is a big task and sometimes it can cost uh, years it can cost millions of dollars and it can cost thousands of hours of effort which you can't uh, do and that's where you know companies like Ketonic come in and what we've done is we made the job of identifying the right tools which the small and medium businesses need uh, easy by evaluating all the right tools and we've stitched together a platform uh, you know we use we have a partner uh, which is airbyte which is one of the largest uh, etl company and growing um, you know at a rapid pace which is probably and probably worth 2 billion dollars it's an open source tool right so as part of uh, as part of our platform you get that out of the box now you have the ability to start bringing the data from all your and this is self service so you're really not dependent on uh, you know 300 dollar per hour it folks right you can go uh, train your you know your yourself or somebody in your team to kind of click a few buttons and bring all the data in one place. And then you, you can use Ketonic where you can start taking the data, uh, cleaning the data, joining the data, either by coding or by dragging and dropping. So we support both low code, no code, uh, you know, uh, full code, uh, and you, know, you can start cleaning the data, joining the data, and then you feed that to uh, you know, a superset, which is a dashboarding capability. Uh, it's one of the most popular dashboarding capability which we offer out of the box, and all this is you know, part of the business IQ package we offer. So now you have the ability to bring all the data, clean it, get a 360 degree view, right? And in the next step, what you start doing is in the, on the Ketonic platform, you can start building models, which can then start feeding your dashboards, but you can also start building your business AI applications on top of Ketonic using technologies like Streamlit and Dash. In fact, Streamlit just got acquired by uh, um, you know one of the company for eight hundred million dollars. So, so this is the stack which you actually need, and that's what we offer. And the other thing, uh, you know, what we understand is the small and medium businesses again have limitations. So we don't want them to start from scratch. So uh, you know, we offer. Uh, a set of pre-built use cases, about 140 of them, where you have a lot of pre-built code, pre-built dashboards, pre-built apps. You can go, so we have use cases for marketing, chief marketing officer, chief financial officer. We have use cases in every industry. So you just click that, you go, uh, you, you download that, and then you customize that. And we have a lot of partners, about you know, uh, 80 of them, who can actually help you customize uh, both on-site, offshore. Uh, and you know, that's how you actually start your AI journey. So uh, yeah, that's, that's a quick, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, view of how small and medium businesses can start using AI to help improve their you know, customer experience, reduce cost, delight customers, and whatever your objective of AI is. It's quite easy. You just, uh, you know, we give you a free trial, Ketonic, and we can work with you to kind of onboard, train. And of course, uh, this was an opportunity to kind of connect with universities, uh, because if, uh, if there are students who are doing some kind of internship or research, uh, they as well kind of work with a small and medium business to solve a real problem, which is a win-win, because the small and medium businesses get benefited out of it. The students kind of get a real-world taste of what happens in real life, how AI is used. And uh, yeah, I think that kind of completes my session. And uh, I, again, want to thank everyone. Uh, I'm not sure about the time, but I think if uh, uh, there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Yeah. Any questions? Any kind of questions, please feel free to ask here. Yeah. Yes, please. Thank you. So if I'm a small and medium enterprise, and uh, I, ha I haven't even gotten started, uh, I have some data. Yep. Um, it, it's all digitized, yep. at least. But it's, it is all over the place. And uh, I don't have many resources available yep. to kind of even take the first step uh, or even to know what the first step is. Yep. So what advice would you give me? So so the best, uh, you know, the, f the first advice I would give you is you have to start somewhere, so they have to start, right? And the second thing is the stack which I talked about, it's not going to cost them millions of dollars. It's thousands, it's less than $1,500. You can have the entire organization being powered, right, per month. And what we also do is we understand that not every organization will be able to take the product in this stack, although this is the best and it's intuitive. They need a hand-holding, and as a product company, we, we can't be everywhere, so we have partners. So we can uh, we, we have packages where we have uh, a dedicated data scientist working either at on, uh, on-site for you or at offshore who's trained, who understands this, and can start working with you to build those use cases. And you probably need them for six months because once you build most of your use cases, it can just be... So that's how you start, and you probably start with just six to ten thousand dollars per per month, right? Uh, and so, so is a subscription. Six? Yes, it is. Uh, okay. So you you have two ways of uh, doing it. One, you can either install it. So it's based on Kubernetes. Uh, it can install anywhere, right? So you can either have it installed on your AWS cloud on prem if you're worried about the data. But if you don't care, I mean, we are an ISO twenty seven thousand one company. But if you think that uh, you're okay with that, we can give you a fully hosted, fully managed platform which spins in 40 minutes. So if you call me now, in 40 minutes you have the stack yeah. and you're ready but to go. But it sounds like the biggest ex expense is finding a data scientist to help me do it. Yes, I think the biggest thing is uh, convincing the SMB to start this journey, <laughs> right? And then, of course, uh, uh, we need the right data scientists. So that's where we are looking at an on-site, offshore, and partnership with universities where students can actually do internship and help the SMBs in real time, and that's one of the uh, things which we are looking at. Right, yeah. I like that answer. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. Any feedback? Do you think SMBs will be able to use AI uh, with what I said, or is, do you think it's a snake oil? Yeah. We, need a, we want a live demo. Of course we will. We, we can provide, yeah. If, yeah, he, he was giving me a live demo last yeah. time we had an <laughs> online meeting. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, of course we can. And then if you go visit our website, we have a short 11, 12 minute video and we have deeper videos and it helps you. So, but like I said, you know, we are we are in the business of helping organizations use AI, right? Uh, and of course, we have a lot of scientists and researchers who build these great algorithms. Now it's the time to take all that effort and look at how we can help businesses start using AI and benefit from it, right? So some of the use cases which we are doing is, uh, you know, a TikTok equivalent in India is using our platform to kind of uh, decide what videos should we suggest to the other customer uh, customers, right, so that they can be uh, entertained, right? We have uh, a bank in Australia looking at which customer might move to another bank on the mortgage so that they can proactively retain them on the customer churn, right? We have customers predicting late payment, right? So the use cases are many, right? It all depends on what industry you are in. And uh, with commoditization of uh, you know AI, it's pretty easy to actually build an application which is customized to you, and you can start benefiting from it. Yeah. And uh, first five customers who sign up through this, we, I'm happy to handle myself personally, and we can definitely see how we can succeed together. Yeah. 
I had uh, one more question. Uh, so how much does interplay with domain expertise uh, play a role here? Uh, I, I see that it's very generic, it's very useful for multi-purpose applications. Yeah. But how much does your company invest in understanding, let's say, one particular domain deeper? Yeah, so so we see we are a technology company. We did think of uh, you know investing in domain and start looking at building applications specific to banking and real estate. But then we realized that we were losing the focus. So what we've done is we've partnered. So we have partners who are focused on healthcare. We have uh, you know partners who are focused on energy. We have partners who are focused on marketing, because it's very hard to have every domain. So. When we're delivering a value to a customer, right, it is a three-party thing. It's customer's commitment, right, it's Ketonic platform, and our partner's domain knowledge and customer's domain knowledge, which comes together, right? And sometimes, uh, you know, we could have a service company and a KPMG kind of a consulting company. I mean, not KPMG, but I just gave that an example so that you can understand who can bring in that consulting. So, yeah, I think we are definitely not looking at being uh, a domain. We want to be domain agnostic and work with our partner to solve a domain problem. And that's the only way to kind of do justice as well, because there's no way you can pick up on every domain. Yeah. yeah. Any final questions? Yes. Um, so I suppose, so how do you ensure that your customers, because you're main office specialists, that they're not, you know, there's, there's when you use AI or ML, you don't want to overfit your model, there's like in sample and, and out of sample considerations. Are, are there checks in place to ensure that Yeah, so see, what we do is uh, we always start with the problem statement. So for a large real estate, when we started the engagement, we agree on business matrices, right? So they say, hey, look, because the model accuracy doesn't matter, right? Because your model might be accurate, but if your business predictions are not in line with what business is expecting, that model is useless, sorry uh, to the scientists here. So what we do is uh, we have a uh, approach which is always business problem first. So we work with them to understand. So in this case, it was late payment. So we said, with a 70% accuracy, we should be able to predict which customer might be late so that we can either call up or we can actually appropriately do a cash flow, right? And then we work backwards. And the other thing about model, unlike code, model is a function of code and data, right? Your models keep deteriorating, they keep changing. And uh, what we do as part of the Ketonic platform is uh, we retrain, the retraining is automated and continuous, so we offer continuous, so DevOps plus continuous training plus continuous monitoring is MLOps, and we are an MLOps company, right? So we offer continuous training, and you can decide to train your model every week, <coughs> every day, every hour, or every month, and you can schedule that. So uh, once your model is in production, it, it gets retrained, and if you're happy with those matrices, the model is moved into production, you always have a fresh model uh, for businesses to consume. In the end, if business is not happy with the outcome, or if they're not, sometimes your might, model might be 100% accurate, but it might not make business sense. So we did an experiment to predict which customer might buy an apartment for a builder. But then it didn't make sense for them from a business perspective. So we had to throw experimentation. Data scientists are called scientists for a reason because they're doing experiments, there is hypothesis, and not every experiment succeeds. But the one which succeeds, we want to move it into production with least amount of rework. And that's what we offer as part of the platform. Any other questions? Yeah, so we, we are a two-year-old company, right? And it took us 18 months to build, right? And uh, we took a lot of open source components. And we are buffet of buffet of the best open source components, right? So from a customer base perspective, um, currently, uh, see, uh, I'll be honest, the Australian customers are very slow to adopt technology. I've been trying to uh, convince a lot of big Australian players to kind of use the platform. The first thing they'll ask you, and I've been in sales for 15 years, is where is it implemented? How many case studies you have, just like what you asked? So what we consciously decided was to kind of focus on US and India, and then uh, start looking at Australia. So at this moment, we have 12 uh, uh, customers. Uh, we have a large bank here, who's our customer. That's the only customer, but we are talking to many other large retailers. So at this moment, our focus has been more on the large enterprises, because uh, until last month, you had to actually, you couldn't buy a SaaS version of our platform. We just launched that, or actually we'll be launching it in a week, so maybe you'll be the first one to consume, right? So we want to commoditize this. So, so far our focus has been on enterprises. So our customer base, two large enterprises in Australia, about eight of them in India. We have one in South Africa, one in Brazil, and one in the US. 
We want to be a global company, and this is the only Australian company which is focused on machine learning operations. We have about 12 competitors in the world. Most of them are either big clouds, US or Israel. So we are really going against the tide. So yeah. yeah. All right. So I think we're short on time now. So let's thank Prem for a very interesting thank you. Thanks presentation. Thanks a lot. It was, yeah, my pleasure. Yeah, thank you.